Hello Grade 8s, this is Mr. Miller and welcome to Lesson 5.2 on the nets of 3D objects. So first of all let's talk about what a net is. A net is a two-dimensional shape that when folded becomes a three-dimensional object. So let's see some examples of that. First thing we'd like to do is to draw the net for each object. We want to label the measurements on the net. So the first object that we have here is called a rectangular prism. And off over here, we are going to do a net of the rectangular prism. So I should mention that the scale we're going to be using in this area here is each square is representing two centimeters of length in real life. So let's take a look at this rectangular prism and it kind of looks like a box of Kleenex. We've got this um, oval shape on top and I imagine that's the part where you might take the Kleenexes out. Um, typically with three dimensional drawings we would take this as the front of the object. So let's just be clear about all the dimensions here. We have a width across this box of 10 centimeters. So this is also 10 centimeters across here and this is also 10 centimeters across here. So you may want to label that on your 3D diagram. You find that helpful. The height of this box is seven centimeters. So again, that's seven centimeters here, and this is seven centimeters here. And the depth of this box is 25 centimeters across, and of course, so this would be 25 centimeters. And over here, this would be 25 centimeters as well. So I'm going to start with the front of this box. For the rectangle on the front, it's going to be 10 centimeters across and seven centimeters tall, which means that it's going to be five boxes across and three and a half tall. So I'm gonna start in the corner here and we'll go one, two, three and a half tall and one, two, three, four, five wide. Next, we're going to do the rectangle, which is the top of this box and so it is 10 centimeters across and it is 25 centimeters deep. So of course that's five boxes across we already have that width we just have to go uh, 12 and a half this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve and a half. So starting from here and going all the way down to there. Okay, that is the top of the box. And next, if we have the the back side flipped up, then that will be another uh, five boxes across, ten centimeters of width, and we need to have a height of seven centimeters, so that's three and a half boxes. And so you can see one, two, three and a half. We've kind of run out of room here. So what I may want to do with this is just shift everything down a little bit. Okay, so now I can see this one here is too tall because it was supposed to be one, two, three and a half, and I've gone too far with that, so I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, it goes a little bit uh, beyond the uh, borders of this uh, area, but I know that in the first place I did that box the right size. Okay. So, moving right along now. Um, Basically, it's kind of like we're taking this cardboard box and we're cutting along the edges here and lifting up the flaps and, and unfolding this box. So if I do the same thing here, if I take this flap on the right and I flip it up, it is 7 centimeters by 25 centimeters. So that means that 
Um, so here's the 25 centimeters. I need to go one, two, three and a half across here, and that is going to be the width of that. Okay, the next panel is the one underneath the bottom of this box, which is 10 centimeters by 25 centimeters. And so we've already got our dimension of 25, so now we need to go five boxes across. So one, two, three, four, five boxes across. And finally, we have one more panel wrapping around the other side, uh, and that is the, the left panel, and that is seven centimeters by 25. So we've already got the dimension of 25. We just need to go one, two, three and a half boxes over. And so we're going from here to there. We'll just size this right. Okay. And it may be helpful to do a little bit of uh, coloring to help you visualize where everything is. Okay, and so just to put the dimensions on here so that it's really clear, this is 10 centimeters by 7 centimeters. And so, of course, this would also be 10 centimeters across, and this is 7 centimeters right here. And next, we've got the um, top of the box. Okay. And finally, we have the um, right and left sides, so why don't we do that in green? And let's just show the dimensions on here. So um, the longest dimension here, this is 25 centimeters. And goes from there to there. And of course, this right here, because this has to be going from the top of the box to the bottom of the box, this is the height. So of course, that would make this um, seven centimeters right here. And then the next one going across here, this would be 10 centimeters. And finally, again, here we have seven centimeters across there. And that specifies all the dimensions for this box. So just imagine that you had this two-dimensional object. If you fold this down, you fold that down, you fold that down, and then the bottom underneath, and then flip this around, if you were to tape that all together, you could create this what looks like kind of like a box of Kleenex. So there we go. That's what the net of a rectangular prism looks like. And now let's take a look at the next one. So here we have a cylinder. And so of course over here we're going to have the net of the cylinder. We will use the same scale that we did before. There we go. Now before we can go any further, we need to know exactly how big to make this. I mean, we know that we're going to have a, a circle for the top, a circle for the bottom, and then we need to have, well, what are we going to have? We've got this curved face, and if you were to take this and slice it down here, and then pull it apart and unravel it, what you'd find is that it looks like a rectangle. And the height of this thing, of course, is 30 centimeters, but what about how wide is it? So for the width of it, 
it needs to be able to wrap around this circle, which means it has to be able to cover the circumference of that circle. And the circumference of a circle is equal to pi times the diameter. So to figure out exactly what this is, going all the way around here, right? the circumference of the circle, we have to do pi times the diameter of that circle. We're given that the diameter of the circle is 8, so we're going to do pi times 8. Now, the textbook tends to use 3.14 for pi. If we multiply that by 8, then we get the following result. So 8 times 3.14 is 25.12. So it says to round answers to the nearest whole centimeter, which means that this is very approximately 25 centimeters to be able to wrap around. Okay. So now we're going to do a rectangle, which is 25 by 30. So there we go. Let me just... Uh, indicate the dimensions here so I decided to orient it this way that this is my 30 centimeters uh, of height and that inside here I'm going to indicate that this is 25 centimeters and that is enough to wrap around the cylinder so it's kinda of like the label on a soup can um, so next we just need to do the circles and the circles have a diameter of 8 centimeters so yeah that is um, four boxes across and actually this can be sitting anywhere along here so it's maybe a little bit easier to see if I take this and move it down a little bit okay so, yeah, you can see here that this is 8 centimeters in diameter. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste that circle and put one on the other end. And so, again, this is 8 centimeters of diameter. So now I'm just going to do a little bit of... Uh, coloring to show how things work. So the top and the bottom are the circles. So of course that's this part here. The top and the bottom are identical. And we've got the curved face of the cylinder, which is kind of like the label on a soup can. And that's this part here. Beautiful. So that's what the net of a cylinder looks like. So now what if we were given a net and we had to come up with a 3D diagram from that? So we're not given any dimensions here, so we won't worry about the exact size or anything. But if we were to take these flaps here and fold them up and tape it all together, what kind of a three-dimensional object would we make? And so hopefully you can recognize that this is the net of a square-based pyramid. And so over here, we're actually going to draw that pyramid. So I'm going to try to uh, do a nice little square here. And we've got to angle it so it looks all three-dimensional. So I'm just going to take these last two lines and I'm going to make them dotted because these are going to be edges that are not going to be so easily viewed from the point of view that we've got.
Okay, so now we just need to pick a point that's going to be like the top of the pyramid. And from that point, you need to pull down to all of the vertices. And now this gives it a nice three-dimensional kind of view, looks like a square-based pyramid. And so I guess I should, should have indicated here this is a square-based pyramid. And that's it, folks. Hope you enjoyed the lesson, and have a great day.